Hi everyone, Jess here, and today I'm joined with Tony Douglas, CEO of Riada. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Jess. So firstly, how do you see your airline taking a leading role in the advancement of digital aviation? Are you seeing any, um, foreseeing any problems arising from this as you connect with international guests? So we're probably the biggest commercial aviation startup in many decades within the Middle East. And the gift that we possess is a blank sheet of paper. We have no legacy. So the ability to do things differently. But it's important that I set some context to this one. Um, the population is the largest within the Arabian Peninsula. The average age is 29 years of age. And it's got the number one adoption of Apple products per capita in the world. This is a digitally native population that runs their life on an iPhone or a tablet or another electronic device. It demands to be able to do so with its new national carrier. And the brand is Riyadh, the brand is Riyadh, the brand is Riyadh. It will stand for three things. Number one, an obsessional attention to detail with guest experience. Number two, a genuine thought leader with environmental sustainability. But to your point, Jess, the third one is to be a genuine digital native, to be able to make sure that you can interact with us on ChatGPT, you can interact with us in the same way you might do with Amazon, Noon, Spotify, Uber, how you run your life today. Why? Because we don't have to connect into the legacy of the past. That's fantastic, and we hear so much at these events about people trying to overcome their legacy systems and update and having to wait for that to unlock the potential of such a, and like you say, an incredibly digitally savvy nation. So it's fantastic to hear about that and it's exciting to see what will come of it. With major carriers already operating in the region, can you highlight Riyadh's unique contribution to Vision 2030? So Vision 2030 um, is an incredibly clear plan to enable further economic diversification by, of course, 2030. There's 13 pillars, one, three, that sit below this plan, one of which, of course, is tourism and the incredible destination attractions that are being invested into in the kingdom, the likes of Red Sea Global Resorts, Neom, of course, Alula, Daria Gate, and many more are there to bring the joys of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to citizens of the world. But the first question you're going to be asking yourself is, how do I get there? And in the future, of course, the answer is going to be Riyadh. That's fantastic. And we, we hear a lot from airlines and airports as well about being a sort of ambassador um, as you're the first point of contact in many ways for people visiting. So we spoke to Jeddah and the they're saying uh, welcoming people into the kingdom and you're saying similar things so it's really exciting to see the responsibility that that brings and the impression that you can leave right from the off. Yeah, look in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia it prides itself on its warm welcome and for those people who haven't been they really should go onto the internet and look at destinations like Alula, look at destinations like Riyadh and Jeddah and what I can guarantee they will be received with a super warm welcome but of course normally the first part of that is when you board the aircraft and you don't get a second chance to make a first impression in life. The reason why I said before an obsessional attention to detail with guest experience is that's what Riyadh Air will give our guests at 38,000 feet and it's super important because this is a fresh brand, this has got a modernistic twist, it's a fashionable brand. If you only look at our aircraft livery, you'll see that that would look more in common with a global executive's private jet than what you would normally expect to see in commercial aviation. We're doing that on purpose to send a message, this is modern Arabia, this is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Our standards are super high and you'll get the warmest of welcomes. Fantastic. And you, you've highlighted a few, um, few themes there. Can you um, give some more insight into what passenger experience we can expect? So you've mentioned the aircraft interior and the sort of tech and obsessional level of detail. Is there anything else you can give us insights into? So we're unashamedly operating a tactic of tease and reveal at the moment. Why? 
we go live in Q2 of 2025. So as a startup, what we're building now is brand awareness. What we're building up now is engagement. And we're doing that by progressively teasing, first of all, and then revealing. So for example, I'll tease now, there will be a second livery and it won't be long before we reveal that to the world. Of course, people are already saying to us, the livery looks amazing. What does the interior look like? It must be equally amazing. Good thought, we'll reveal that in the early stages of next year. On the digital side of it, probably three occasions during the course of next year, we'll reveal very, very clear illustrations of how you interact with us in a modern digital way. So it's about building expectation, building excitement and engagement, and then revealing it step by step. We're doing a fantastic job of building anticipation. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people waiting to see what's in store. You've spoken a lot about um, how you're going to be leveraging technology. How will, be you, how will you be realizing AI's full potential in the airline? Yeah, so I mentioned before the way our population in the kingdom run their lives. Uh, they use it every day. And, you know, we look at things like ChatGPT as well as generative AI, which obviously has a connection there. The ability in the future literally to talk into your phone, perhaps, and say, I've got $2,000, I've got five days off, I really do like the look of this city and this city, give me some ideas. Cabin class isn't as important as hotel uh, room, press. Da -da 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 -da. Like the look of that one, press, done. Your face is your ticket, biometrically, and therefore it's as easy as engaging with the way in which perhaps many of us do today with Amazon or Noon. And because we don't have a legacy, that was always the challenge for airport uh, or airline executives such as myself, is how do you connect everyday modern AI-based technology into some of the legacy systems. The good news for us as a startup, we don't have any of those legacy systems, so we'll start from day one in a modern digital way. That sounds like a real frictionless experience and I can't wait to see how that works. Um, so events like today are all about driving collaboration in the industry. How do you think these help to progress the industry as a whole? So I think if I go back to the digital side of it, many of my friends and colleagues from other big airlines are very, very keen to see how we push on this because it's not just for Riyadh Air, it's for the benefit of many others. And obviously if you've got a legacy, it might be a series of steps that allows evolution, but to get somebody over the bridge first is always an advantage. So. Uh, we're being inspired by the support of our colleagues in that regard. There's a big responsibility, uh, it goes without saying, but there's a genuine opportunity for us to do things very, very differently uh, in this regard. And coming to places like this, obviously there's a buzz, there's an urgency. We missed them during the pandemic. We've only really just got back to them now. And of course, it's a way of us communicating the brand is Riyadh, the brand is Riyadh. The brand is Riyadh. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining me today and have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you.